<laughs> okay, okay, okay. So remember when I said that this game, this game, this Fairy Fencer F game, was a surprisingly good game, and that I was having fun with it, and everybody was like, What? I can't believe you're having fun with it, that makes no sense, I would've thought you hated it, it's a reskin, a hyperdimension, Neptunia, you said you hated that game. Y'all were right. Y'all motherfuckers were right, this game sucks. But now I'm committed to it, I bought it, now I'm gonna fucking beat it, now I'm grinding for goddamn pretty shells, and while we're grinding for fucking pretty shells, which I've had to grind for, like, four times previously for this fucking quest. I met this goddamn killer insect at least 700 goddamn times. Because the drop rate of the fucking pretty shell is probably around, like, 0.0001%. Probably add a few zeros in there, but anyway. Oh, you can't steal the motherfuckers. I tried. That's why this useless ass motherfucker's in the party. Because he has the only steal ability currently. I didn't even I didn't even look at the screen to see if I got one. Did I get one? I probably didn't get one. I have two right now. I need five. Where is pretty sure? Pretty hell! Where is it? That's the pretty feather. That's the pretty feather. I don't care about the feather. Everything gotta be goddamn pretty. I didn't. I got still got two. Oh, that spot right there is the best. You just you literally just uh, uh let's go check out that item so much shit. Why not? Why not? I got fucking time. So somebody suggested, requested of me that I speak of of the Tokyo Game Show and everything that's going on over there. Uh, and I was like, and I actually responded to that with you know what I had at the moment, which was I haven't really been paying that much attention to it. Like, I mean, I've been looking at stories that are posted on game sites and shit just to get an idea you know like hey is there anything you know new is there anything new being talked about is there anything new going on the answer to that is no it's all still the same but the, all the games like the main game showcases are still all the goddamn games that were shown at evo 2013 when they were announcing um like, hey, this is the next generation. She's useless. I don't know why I still have her in my party. She's useless in this fight. She has nothing to do this week against. Her. Um, but yeah, and then so I, that's what that was my response. Like, yeah, I don't really have anything to talk about. I don't really, you know, know much about the games that they have been talking about. I don't really know much. Else. Yeah, I got a pretty shell. And so then he was like, well, why don't you just talk about Bloodborne? And Metal Gear Solid 5. And I was like, fuck, that's even worse. Because with Bloodborne, basically, this is how I am with games. There are games, I mean, basically, I can kind of, this is overgeneralizing way too much. But in general, I can put upcoming games into three different, like, files, I guess. Three different, um, whatever. I, I can't think of the word right now. Um, games that I know I'm going to buy. Are you ready? And, like, I just, I don't care to look at information for them. I don't care to potentially spoil myself on details that might be more fun to discover for myself. That kind of shit. Bloodborne falls under that. Oh, he's weak to I completely forgot this dude had great sword attacks. Um. And that's what Bloodborne falls under. Like, with, you know, my history with that style of series. I don't know why I'm still doing this. This motherfucker dead. Shit! Dark Souls 1 I jumped into and I had uh, incorrect expectations and so I ended up not really enjoying that game the first time through like it caused me a lot of unnecessary uh, agitation due to the fact that I expected the gameplay to be different I thought the gameplay would be more faster paced uh, it wouldn't be styled around you know patience um, picking your times to attack all that shit and so because of that, I didn't like the game very much my first time through, and it was just, that's all on me. That's all completely on me. Like, that's nothing to do with it being a bad game or anything. I just didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, and so playing through it again, I had quite a bit of fun with it, because I knew what to expect. I knew what I was waiting for. Uh, except Light Town. Light Town can still, as per usual, go fuck itself. But I really enjoyed it. And then Dark Souls 2 came out, and obviously I played the shit out of Dark Souls 2. And aside from, you know, the final few levels, I greatly enjoyed Dark Souls 2 as well. So, I know that I'm going to buy Bloodborne. There's no reason for me not to purchase, to pre-order and purchase Bloodborne. So I haven't been paying attention to information around that. All that I know is that he has some, like, fucking warping 
sight slash cleaver slash something and there's guns. That's the extent of my knowledge around Bloodborne. I don't know anything else. Metal Gear Solid 5. Now I'm probably gonna get crucified for this shit, but I have never played a Metal Gear Solid game in my life. The, the only real thing, I played Revengeance for probably an hour, but that doesn't really count. I have not played like a main Metal Gear Solid game ever. And it's just, that's just because the gameplay, the style, the story, all that shit. I mean, basically everything about it just, it doesn't interest me. That's not my jam. I don't particularly care for it. And so, because of that, I just haven't played it. So again, that would fall in the category of games that I'm just not interested in at all, and I'm not going to buy them. That's the word I was thinking of. Category. Um... Yeah, I just don't care for it, so I'm not paying attention to it because I, there's no reason for me to care about it at all. So unfortunately, that's the status of Metal Gear Solid 5. I don't know anything about it because I know I won't play it. I know it's not Metal Gear Solid. It's not the type of game that I enjoy. So I can't talk about that at all. But then they've been coming out with some new things. Uh, I saw some Tales of Zestiria. I think, I don't know how that's how you pronounce it, but it's the next Tales game coming up. Uh, actually, I think Tales of Hearts on the Vita comes out first. I'm not, I haven't really paid much attention to that because obviously I don't have a Vita. But I was very unimpressed. I mean, obviously, this, you have to take this with a grain of salt. It's a showcasing of a game that is not going to be coming out until next year. And who knows if it's even, you know, if there's still another year in development or if it's just a few months. You know, who knows how long they still have to develop the game. But as of right now, I am just absurdly unimpressed. Uh, with the graphics of that game, it's just, like, it's kind of the same thing as Tales of Zillia, like, Tales of Zillia, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this, Tales of Zillia, when it's in motion, looks fantastic, it really, I really do enjoy, you know, like, the battle graphics, I do enjoy it, um, actually, that's basically it, I enjoy the battle graphics, but the backdrops, the environments, uh, when you zoom in on character models, I hate it. It looks terrible. I just, I, it looks like somebody that has not experimented at all with like pushing the limits of what the PS3 or the Xbox 360 is capable of. And I mean, obviously, the Xbox 360 is kind of irrelevant here, but just, they don't know what the console they're developing on is capable of, and so they play it safe. They don't push uh, the potential like graphical quality that they could get out of the game. And it's the same thing with Tales of Zestaria, like they zoomed in on, um, I didn't look at the entire, it was like a 15 minute video of, uh, demo gameplay, but it's just, when they zoomed in on the character talking, I just, the only thing I could think of was like, this looks fucking terrible. And, again, I didn't really pay all that much attention to what it looks like in battle, because I was too agitated. <laughs> By uh, they changed the camera. Like in Tail, in the pre in previous Tales games, they basically had a dynamic camera, which would swirl around, kind of just centralizing uh, focus on you. But you could pull it out or push it, you know, focus it in as far as you wanted to. In Tales of Zestaria, I don't know if this is a configurable option. God, I hope it is because if it's not, I would be so sad. They had it fo like this actually. Like, imagine your entire entire battle stuck in this, where the camera is centered at all times directly behind the character that you are controlling. It's not like, thi like this right here, this is what kind of what I'm talking about. Like, it kind of takes a more dynamic view to give you the best focus of the action, to give you, uh, you know, you can see around yourself. And then Tales of Zestaria doesn't do that, it just is it, centered specifically behind the main character, and I don't like that at all. I really didn't like watching it. And so it looks like, again, you know, like, I've been very critical of the Tales series. Oh, I got another one! Tales of Vesperia, as always, one of my favorite games. It was the first Tales of game I ever played. Uh, now granted, this also has to be taken with a grain of salt because I've played older Tales games too and the only one that I've gotten into was Tales of the Abyss. Uh, I played Tales of Symphonia which obviously a lot of people consider the height of Tales. A lot, that's a lot of people's favorite Tales game and I didn't like it. I didn't, I mean I own the, um, I don't want to say I didn't like it but it just that it was dated enough to the point where I just, I didn't enjoy it. Like, if I had played it when it first came out, I would probably enjoy it a great deal more than I ended up uh, enjoying it. Because I bought the Tales of HD, um, 
uh, the Tales of Symphonia HD collection was on sale for like nine dollars or something. So that was worth it to me, even though I don't really particularly enjoy it. Like maybe sometime down the road, all something to change in my mind, and I will love everything about it. But as of right now, you know, I didn't. It wasn't really my jam. Tales of Grace is F. I cannot be more critical of how poorly written, uh, how bad the characters were. It had a good battle. It had a good battle system, but it was just everything else was terrible. And then you come to Tales of Zillia, and I same thing. Like the actions, Alvin. T Alvin basically ruined that game for me by himself. The actions he takes in that game are so inexcusable from a standpoint of like, I see this person as my ally, and yet they continually allow him to come back, make amends, I guess, even though he never really does make amends. Like, he never makes up for it, he just continues to simply be there. And there is just, oh my god, I can't. Alvin basically ruined that game for me by himself. And that just, you know, that kind of made me overly critical of everything else because of just how bad that was. And then, Tales of Zillia 2. You're coming into a game and they actually, I feel like they fixed it. I actually didn't mind Alvin in that game. I thought he, I, he was one of my uh, more likable characters in that game. I generally liked that game. Except it was so lazy from a technical standpoint. Because, you know, at first, before the game came out, everybody's, uh, you know, reviewers were mentioning it, recycled environments, and from what I could see, everybody at that time was taking that, the recycled environments criticism as they used some of the same environments that were already in Tales of Zillia 1 and 2 over again, and everybody's justification of that was, well, it's only two years in the future, you know, the world's not gonna change that much in just two years, which to me, like, Yes, from a logical standpoint, that makes sense, but we didn't see the entire fucking world in the first place. Like, that's a terrible cop-out. Like, you're acting like we've traveled the entire world and we've seen everything there is to see and there's no space for expansion, there's no space for new areas or anything like that, which is just blatantly untrue. But despite that, it was obvious after playing it myself, they were not critical of, well, they, I mean, that they were, but that was a small part of it. They weren't as critical of the areas being the same from Tales of Zillia 1 over to Tales of Zillia 2. They were critical of it because you were continually going back to the same environments over and over again when you do those uh, fractured dimension segments. Literally, the same exact item sets that you can get from Discovery Points. The same exact enemy sets. Everything was exactly the same. The only thing that was different is what filled out your text boxes. And that is just inexcusably lazy from a game designer's perspective. And so, like, I, I have no real, like, belief in the quality of the tail system at this time because... If you are that lazy to believe that that'll do something worthwhile, that mentality isn't going to leave. I, like, I've seen... Now granted, this is something that exists in a lot of people. A lot of people are very incapable of recognizing uh, valid criticisms towards their creations. And that's something I've always, you know, tried to be as honest as possible with myself about, about, you know, like, okay, this wasn't really that good, you could do better. And being willing to take uh, constructive criticism from other people is a very important aspect of being a content creator, because people are going to have different viewpoints than you. People are going to bring up um, aspects of your work that you never would have thought of, and so you have to be receptive to that kind of shit. But there's so, like, so many video game companies, this is the first time I really paid attention to this was due to the Fire Emblem series. For a long time, who, what, whoever the developer of Fire Emblem is, stopped bringing the Fire Emblem series over to America because the, um, Shadow Dragon, I think it was called? The, uh, very first Fire Emblem for the Nintendo DS bombed. It bombed it, but 
It bombed because it was a terrible game. I played that. I am an avid fan of the Fire Emblem series. I I own every single US released Fire Emblem that is not Shadow Dragon. Uh, I, I hunted down um, the GameCube version, which took me a long ass time to do once I got a Wii because, you know, that's one of the reasons I got it was so I could play those Fire Emblem games. And yet, Shadow Dragon was just a piece of shit. It was a, it was a bad game, pure and simple. But the company went, oh, well, guess America doesn't want Fire Emblem anymore, and that was that. They didn't look at the game and be like, oh, this didn't sell because we did a terrible job with it. They went, oh, America just doesn't care for Fire Emblem. Sucks. Guess we won't release Fire Emblem there anymore. And then they come over and they release Awakening, which has been one of the top, as far as I'm aware, it's one of the best-selling uh, RPGs that has been released on the Nintendo 3DS. And it was it was a very good game. You know, there are some valid criticisms around that game too. I'm not gonna kill it. But that's the kind of thing that you get a lot with companies like that, where it's just like, oh well, we made the best game we could make. We think it's great. And so obviously people just don't care for this series anymore. Which that's actually what they did with Tales of Vesperia too, wasn't it? Like, because it didn't sell well, which there are tons of reasons why it wouldn't sell well. Number one, it had absolutely practically no real um, advertisement for the game. Like, I was looking forward to that game. I remember looking forward to that game. And I remember walking into GameStop one day, and I just saw it on the shelf there, and I was like, that fucking, that came out? When the hell did that come out? Gimme! Like, I had no, I was, look, I was looking forward to the game, and I didn't even know it had been released. So, like, how do you expect to get people to buy a game on a console that isn't known for RPGs in the first place, when you don't even say, yo, come check out our RPG? So, of course, it's not going to sell. And then again, obviously, it being on the Xbox 360 isn't going to help it at all, because a lot of people bought... A lot of the JRPG fans of the previous era knew all of the JRPGs came out on the PS2, so I'm going to buy a PS3. You know, it's a difficult prospect when, you know, you're a gamer as a hobby to purchase multiple consoles. Like, I have staggered all of my console purchases over periods of years. You know, like, I didn't buy a PS3 myself until it was probably three years old. I don't even know if I'm going to buy a, um, god damn, what am I doing? Why am I here? Why am I here? Fuck it, let's just do Flame Assault. Let's show off a new attack. Um, God damn it, just give me fucking pretty shells, you motherfucking swoon. This is part of the reason why I just don't like this game anymore. Um, shit, so what was I talking Oh yeah, right, so Tales of Vesperia, and th that was, they did the same thing. Oh, guess America doesn't particularly care for the Tales of series anymore, guess we'll just not release it. And then they waited, and finally they released Tales of Graces F, which sold... A lot better than it should have, honestly, but, you know, the U.S. fans were starved for Tails games, and they knew, you know, like, if we don't fucking buy this, they're gonna just take that as another indication that the Tails series doesn't deserve to be over here. So that's just a shitty mentality. I don't know why I went on about it as long as I... God damn, I suck at... Just, like, I suck at judging that proper distance. But yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's, like I said, I went on a bit too long about it, and I'll stop but, you know, you're never going to improve your sales. You're never going to do better in that regard if you don't understand that, like, it's not because people don't care about your series. It's because you don't care to make the game that your series deserves to have. And you need to understand that from an introspection level, like, sometimes it's your fault, sometimes it's not, but so many times now... People will never take blame for anything. Take blame for shit. Understand that sometimes what you create is not the best thing in the world and you need to go back to the drawing board and fix that shit. Because it can be fixed. You can fix anything. Anything. 
but you have to make that effort and you gotta understand why it's broken in the first place and so far from what i've seen from namco bandai what who whatever whatever the i think there's two different teams of tales developers like there's like team symphonia and then team something else i don't know as far as i'm aware but i haven't really paid that i, I will freely admit i haven't exactly paid too terribly much to that whole thing. But then it would, what what else could I what else could I talk about with Giga Flow? But, oh, I could have I could have switched to Freeze. I should do that too. There was another. Oh shit! This doesn't have anything to do with TGS. But uh, oh my god, do I have five? Please, 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 please. That must be it. I mean, there's no other reason for that quest activated to have happened. I'm fucking done. Get me the fuck out of here. Oh, I always do that wrong. I always hit the wrong shoulder buttons. Um, so let's go back here, let's turn in our quest, oops, alright so now you can just stare at this handsome man who actually looks very similar to an English professor I had, actually dresses pretty much the same too except he didn't unbutton that many buttons but yeah he would, he would wear a dress shirt and a vest every day. Um, so, what other games, oh. Nothing to do with TGS, but apparently Bayonetta isn't doing too hot right now in Japan, which is okay, because like a lot of people mentioned, uh, Japan's not really favorable about the whole console thing anymore. They are very, very big into um, mobile gaming now, and they're just, you know, they're, they, the anything to do with consoles is just not performing as well there, so we'll see how it does in America, but... I don't know, man. So far, I just don't have a reason to buy a Wii U, but I will be very, very sad if Bayonetta 2 doesn't get the sales it deserves, which it might not because almost every third-party game that gets released on a Nintendo platform underperforms, and it's very sad, but that was their only option to get the game released, so what are you going to do? But yeah, because I have no intent, I, I don't even, the only other game that I can think of, like, upcoming on the Wii U that I would even, that would even get me to ponder uh, purchasing one is that, um, uh, Fire, actually, was that even, was that even declared as, like, a Nintendo platform exclusive? The Fire Emblem Cross Shin Megami Tensei shit, which was mentioned, like, once and has never been mentioned again? I don't even know. But yeah, so my biggest problem right now with just next generation gaming is there's almost nothing new being talked about. It's People are still talking about uh, Order 1886, people are still talking about Final Fantasy XV, people are still talking about Drive Club, just like, you know, all these, all these games that were revealed at EVO 2013, and then they don't even have a release date until like late 2015 and they're still gonna be talked about and they're still just it's gonna be endless discussion about these games that I am already aware of and like I want to see something new show me something new I actually looked it up uh, for the PS4 right now as of right now there is absolutely nothing coming out on the PS4 that I give a shit about until November which is Dragon Age Inquisition and then after that um, Guilty Gear XR, which I have, apparently, according, I, I'm starting, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash NateArvistada, I'm gonna start using that shit for realsies, you got questions for me, tweet me, you got, you want me to talk about something, I'll tweet it, fuck it, I'll have to make a video for everything, I'll start using Twitter, but so I, you know, getting back into that, I tweeted Markman, and I asked him, yo, is that Persona 4 Arena Ultimax stick that you guys released in Japan that come with stateside? I'll buy it. And he's like, yep. He said yes, that it's going to become a stateside. He didn't obviously didn't say a release date or anything, but he just said, yep, it's coming. So I will buy that because that stick is uh, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 compatible. So that gives me a PS4 stick. That gives me a replacement for the stick that I think has been, you know, a little iffy uh, of late. And so I'll be getting Guilty Gear XR for the PS4 now that I know that I can buy that stick. Um, so other than that, those are the only two games for the rest of 2014. I only own four games right now. No, five games, if you include Resogun. But Resogun I got free for having a PlayStation Now. PlayStation Plus, not PlayStation Now. For having a PlayStation Plus subscription. I don't even give a shit about PlayStation Now. I don't even understand, like, if it was, you know, buy these games and you have them, so long as you, you know, continue to have a PlayStation Plus subscription with us, 
I'd be fine with it. But renting it, you know, like you get purchase, you know, rent this for however many hours for three ninety nine, and then once those hours are over, you have to re-rent it for another three ninety nine. Fuck that. Fuck that. That just killed all interest I had in PlayStation Now. Um. So what? Else? I was there was something else. All oh, right. So and then after that. Uh. Alright, so I only own four games. One of them I don't even give a shit about. Watch Dogs. Which was, again, too much hype. Didn't even get close to meeting it. And I'm, like, that game, I didn't even bother beating it. I think I got, like, maybe 25% of the way into the story. And I was just like, I am having absolutely no fun here. I just, I don't enjoy anything about this game. So I'm out. Peace, Watch Dogs. I'm done. Infamous Second Son, which I really did enjoy, but it's a very short game. And once you beat it... Like, once you, you know, you run through it, play the good, play as a good guy or a bad guy, whichever. Then you run through a second time, you play the opposite, get the achievements if you care about it, use the different powers, etc, etc. Uh, then you're done. There's really nothing, like, there's really nothing to do after that. There's no, it, the, the gameplay, while very fun, is not going to last you for just, like, years on end. Um, Transistor, same thing. I adore that game. Uh, amazing soundtrack, but once you beat it twice, you're done. Really no reason to play it again after that. And then, what's the fourth? Shit, I don't even have a fourth game, do I? It's just those three. It is just those three. So I, I own, I ha this console has been out since 2013. I have, I now, I will own, by the end of, um, 2014, less than half a game per month for this year and then there's nothing again until February which actually a lot of things just kind of roll out in February that you have um I'm trying to remember all of them Evolve is one of them which I'm gonna get because that's by the Left 4 Dead people uh Witcher 3 is gonna come out which I need to play Witcher 2 but yeah Witcher 3 is gonna come out and I really like CD Projekt Red just seems like one of those companies where it's like you want to support these dudes because they're just good dudes um and they like they really care about the games they make so they deserve so like if you have any kind of liking toward the style of games that they're gonna release you should totally support it just be you know they seem to be on the side of their fans there was some there was one other thing fuck it I'm gonna go look at it We're gonna, uh, so let's talk about while I'm getting over while I'm browsing over it's gonna take me less time than it's gonna even take to get into this next topic but um the, the way I basically see it is, like, there's such a lack of, like, worthwhile new news. Oh, Bloodborne comes out. How did I forget that one? I was just talking about how Bloodborne is, like, the one game I'm gonna fucking get. So, yeah, Bloodborne of, and Evolve and The Witcher 3 all come out in February. Um, Order 1886 also does, but I don't know. Uh, that's a game that I'm gonna have to look into. I never even said what the third category was. Order 1886 would fall into that category. I'm interested, but not... You know, like, oh, I'm totally gonna buy this game. I don't know enough about it. So that would be either something that I need to look further into or just add to my game flag queue, whatever. Um, but so, like, there have been so many stories about, about Final Fantasy 15, and like half of those stories have, that I have seen have been in regard to the fucking demo. There has been such a lack of, you know, like, good interesting gaming news in regard to the next generation shit that there have been multiple stories regarding the game demo that isn't even gonna fucking come out until at least march of 2015 or later that's six months away and there's continuous news stories about a fucking game demo about what you can expect from the game demo about what it's coming with which apparently is wrapped with final fantasy type o which i don't even know what the hell that is um, it's, just, it's fucking ridiculous. That was the way I saw it. Like, oh yeah, there's definitely nothing interesting to talk about because there's five new stories about a fucking demo. Great. But, uh, Final Fantasy XV is, again, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Tales. Again, where they're, I don't really trust them. Because obviously they have fantastic production values and it's showing through. The game looks fucking great. As far as I'm aware, it looks amazing. But... I don't really trust them with anything beyond making a game look good on the surface. And their sales have been uh, supporting that too. Apparently Lightning Returns, I cannot imagine it sold enough to make up for how much they must have spent 
on, you know, creation and advertisement and shit, because it didn't sell very well. Um, so we'll see there. But yeah, I just, I, I don't know. It could be, it could be good. The, you know, when you have a series like Final Fantasy, it, there's always the chance that it could be an absolutely amazing game. But their track record has not been the best. So we'll see. We'll see if they can get back the fan support that Square Enix has lost it of late. Um, Mortal Kombat X was actually the very first Mortal Kombat game that I have ever seen. That I thought, oh hey, I might actually want to check that out because they it actually looks fluid now, which was always my main complaint in regard to Mortal Kombat. Like it, it looks so clunky. It looks just it just looks bad. I don't care how well it plays, which I didn't really think it played that well. I didn't particularly enjoy any kind of gameplay I ever watched regarding those games anyway, but just, you know, it was the, to top it all off, it had to look bad while doing everything else that I didn't agree with. But Mortal Kombat X, I saw a very brief trailer and it looked quite fluid, it looked very interesting, so that might actually be the very first Mortal Kombat I actually bothered to look into. There's a sequel to Bravely Default, which I'm super excited for, because I really like Bravely Default. Bravely Default was, you know, like, the big thing, because, you know, it, it was basically releasing around the same time as Lightning Returns, and it's like, look at this game getting all this praise from the press about going back to the roots of JRPGs, and it was just, you know, this big thing where, yes, innovation, pushing the genre forward, uh, you know, doing new things, that's a great thing to be trying to do absolutely and you're gonna stumble along the way when you try something new that's just that's inevitable and you just have to soldier on through it and fix whatever problems you had with it first and tighten up the formula and make it work and then eventually it'll become something good but bravely default was that return to roots that just showed like while yes innovation is good people want the old too you know like they want what they love so it, it's cool that that's getting a sequel what else could I talk about? Platinum Games is actually their, what is that shit? Dragon Scaled or something like that? What the fuck? That's not what it is. But I keep wanting to call it Dragonborn because there's Bloodborne and Battleborn. So I wanted to like the trifecta of Dragonborn. But it's not. It's some. It's something else. It's, I don't know, it's something scaled. It has something, the title has something to do with scales, but I can't fucking remember it. But it's by Platinum Games, so I'm super excited by that. Because Platinum Games has never really let me down. Platinum Games did Vanquish, if I am remembering correctly, which was a very fun game. Uh, obviously Bayonetta, very fun game. Anarchy Reigns, which was again a very fun game. The only problem with that game, and the only reason why a lot of people stopped playing it, was just because it had bad netcode, unfortunately. That was the only bad part of it, but what they created was very good and very fun. And so, yeah, like I said, it's, just, it's unfortunate that game had terrible netcode uh, that made a lot of people drop the game very quickly. But yeah, so I've never been let down by a Platinum Games game, so I'm very, very much looking forward to that. Battleborn was the other one, but I don't really... I don't know, man. I played I played Borderlands, and I really love Borderlands, but then Borderlands 2 came out, and I bought it, and I just I couldn't get into that game. I think I played it for, like, two hours, and I was like, eh. It would be... It would definitely be... You know, they, they make that game as a uh, group you know, play this with your friends kind of a thing. It's definitely not really meant to be a solo game, so that was obviously my problem is I tried to play it solo. But it looks like Battleborn is the same kind of thing. So, you know, if you do have a group of tight friends, you know, you can make any game fun when you're playing it with friends. Just to be perfectly honest. Like, you can play the shittiest games in the world, and it'll be fun if you're with the right people. So, you know, making a group game like that. Oh, you know what? They didn't talk about it on Mirror's Edge too. I just looked up on my, on my games list, and Mirror's Edge has a very, uh... It stands out very well. It has a very the side of it. It helps that it's right next to uh, my big ass Mass Effect 3 box, which is literally just black with Mass Effect 3 down the middle. And then right next to it is just this really boring. It's 99 Nights. I don't know why I bought that game. It's I mean it was a fun game, but that, and that was my very first. It's again it's kind of the same thing with a lot of things. That was the very first game I ever played that was you know kind of used the Dynasty Warriors formula. And so I really enjoyed it, but going back and playing it again, I was like, God, this is just not a good game. <laughs> but yeah, it really it stands out quite a bit. So I saw Mirror's Edge. What's up with Mirror's Edge 2, man? I want to see more of it. I love Mirror's Edge. But yeah, that's basically... 
there's really no justification for me, I mean, for me and for people like me. Granted, if you are a very big FPS fan, you in there. You got Destiny and you got Titanfall. Uh, if you're a sports game fan, you're in there too. Because you got, you know, all the NBA 2K 15s, the FIFA 2015s. All that. You know, you got all those games to tide you over. But for me, as somebody who really, you know, I, I've never really liked, I don't want to say never liked sports games, but the when I was young, I did enjoy them. But, you know, the older I grew, the more I was just kind of like, you know, I would rather just go out and play this rather than play a game playing this. And so, you know, as somebody who's basically ultimately looking out for just, like, RPGs or, like, really good action games or fighting games, there's really nothing worthwhile in the next generation as of now and not even really till 2015 to really justify the next generation of platforms. And it's the same kind of thing that happened to the 3DS, too. Like, I took my damn time buying a 3DS because there was no reason... There was no reason for it. They just, it, they took a long time to actually come out with a worthwhile set of games. And it seems like the same thing is just happening over and over, you know, nobody's really trying to release, you know, like the console seller early on. See, I don't have anything else to talk about in regard to that. I am though, however, I'm gonna completely stop. I will never again say I am going to do this in a video because I just did that with Devil May Cry and uh, now like I'm not even sure because basically it went from I am totally gonna do this to starting to do it and then I was like this is stupid I'm gonna play through the game because you start out with only two combos right you have why 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 and why delay for a little bit why why those are your combos you also have two other moves in a launcher and uh, helm breaker from the air those are your those that is the move set you have at the beginning of the game that's boring nobody wants to see that in a devil may cry so like basically it went from I will play this game to fuck it I'm gonna beat this game you know just play through it without recording it not doing anything else I'm gonna beat this damn game unlock all the various shit so then I can play a new game on the next higher difficulty level that gets unlocked and then I'll record this bitch but then I started playing Devil May Cry 3 and I have issues with that game like the camera is just, I mean the camera is just an enemy of its own in every single fighting game or not fighting game in every single action game like that I have never played an action game that has a good uh, camera that like doesn't get stuck behind walls or like hiding enemies accidentally or just doesn't follow along the character very well and Devil May Cry 3 is no exception to that but on top of that Dante is so fucking slow he is agonizingly slow because the very first uh, thing you can really uh, reliably unlock is the move Stinger which for those of you that you know may not know Devil May Cry or you may not have watched uh, Marvel Stinger, you know, he just lunges forward with the sword and he stabs forward with the sword. And when you hit an enemy with that sword, it sends them flying away. So if there's no, like, wall or debris in the way, they go flying across the area. Dante is so slow that it takes a good three or four seconds of just holding straight forward for him to actually get over <laughs> to that enemy to follow it up. And by that time, you know, your combo meter has drained away you've lost like two letter grades for your combo it's just so sad and that pisses me off I really don't like uh, I really don't like that so I mean, it's just, there's a couple of factors that I may not end up doing Devil May Cry which is why I need to just I need to just stop saying like I'm totally gonna do this because then you know inevitably something happens I'm just like yeah, I don't really want to do this anymore so I just need to stop I just need to stop the other problem that happened I played Sonic Unleashed, and I'm actually, I kept, I was debating over whether or not I should just like, fuck it. I tried it, I tried to record it, I got to a point where I quit and I was going to send it back, and now if I replay the game, it's not going to be the same. You know, like, I'm going to get up to the point where I know this is where I quit, this is what caused me to quit, but now I have to soldier on through it despite this making me quit initially, and continue on past that and get to another spot that'll make me quit. But every single point up until the part that I quit, it's not gonna be the same. I know what to expect, I know what's coming. 
And so that's probably gonna be very dull. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I, I still haven't decided whether or not yet. I haven't been a hundred percent on whether or not I'm going to replay it. I still don't know, or if I should just send it back and play Sonic Generations instead. Because I do want one final Sonic game. That was going to be the final Sonic game I played, and then I was done with that, and I would move on to other series. Um, but now I, I don't know. I need to make my mind up on that. But yeah, just I, I was so mad because I went to upload it, and that was I was gonna upload that before Sonic Adventure. And then I get, you know, I get to the upload page and I'm like, wait, where's the folder for Sonic Unleashed? The hell did it go? So then I search like everything on my computer, you know, did I accidentally move it somewhere? Did I send it to the recycle bin accidentally? I couldn't find, I couldn't find it. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. Biggest mystery of my life. I have no fucking clue where it went. And so I need to make that decision. Uh, but yeah, I need to just stop like saying, yes, I will totally do this. Because, you know, shit happens, and sometimes that you end up not being able to do that. So I need to just, you know, until it comes along, not to, just don't talk about it. Just fucking shut up. <laughs> don't discuss it. Because it's the same thing. I mentioned, like, various things. Catherine, when that game came out, I was like, hey, you know what? I can totally do a playthrough of this. Because after I played it, I was like, you know, okay, I enjoy this game. But then I tried to play it again, and I was like, okay, this is... I really enjoyed Catherine, but I don't... I, I'm not interested in doing a second playthrough. Sorry, because you're not getting that. Um... That was another thing that I talked about doing. Demon Souls. I said I would do a playthrough of that, and then I got to a certain point where it just... Uh, I kind of just stopped playing the game, so I just stopped there and made a death compilation, and that was that. So we had that going for us. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's been plenty of other things where I've said, like, yes, I'm totally gonna do this, and then I end up never doing it because it just, you know, something happened to make that not happen. So I need to completely just never again will I say, oh, yeah, I'm totally gonna do it. Like, I'll just wait and see what's upcoming in the future. That's that. <laughs> never gonna give any details again. But yes, oh, let's actually, I just said, like, everything about this game was ruined. So when it started out, I thought I was having fun. You had all this, let me, where the fuck is my controller? You had all this stuff, battle options, weapon boost, look at all this stuff, look at all this upgradable stuff. It looks so exciting, right? You got so much shit here. None of it matters. None of it fucking matters. Like, none of these, every single one of these that you see right here, fucking useless. Everything you see right here, fucking you, except this, this is awesome. Backtrack is the best game in the game. Oh, excuse me, the best ability in the game. This shit's useful. This, this stuff is useful, and I'm actually saving up for Goddess's Blessing now. But th this is really- these- this section right here, these are all your normal attacks. This is the only section that matters. Like, uh, the- the reason why I say the skills and the magic are fucking useless, they are. They do significantly less damage than a regular attack chain. From, like, every single angle. And then to top that all off, they're actually- you're actually given skills. Like, Every character has a special skill at their disposal. Uh, Fangs, the main character, he has this thing called, I, I believe, Serious Face, I think is what it's called. And so when you trigger that, every single SP, SP cost for regular uh, abilities doubles. Um, for skills and magic, the SP cost doubles, but the power of it is multiplied by 1.5. But then the big thing is that your regular attacks, they now cost 30 SP. Usually they're free, you just you just use them, it doesn't cost anything. All of his regular attacks do 30, cost 30 SP, but they do significantly more damage as well. So in general, you are doing, when you turn that shit on, you are doing, for instance, he can do 5 attacks right now per chain, that's 150 SP. It will do, what's his, I think this is, no wait, this is 100, right? This one, it doesn't even fucking tell you what the SP cost is for it, really? Oops, shit, I always do that every damn time. But seriously, they don't, they don't, they don't tell you the SP cost? How the fuck do you not tell us the SP cost on this section? What kind of information giving shit is this? Y'all motherfuckers suck. Y'all motherfuckers, y'all motherfuckers suck. I want to say this one costs 100, if I'm remembering correctly. This costs, this costs either 25 or, the problem is I have a, um, <laughs> I have an ability that 
that multiplies the amount of weapon points you get, which is the points you get to upgrade, but it also doubles the SP cost, so my mind is just like completely fucking mixed up on which is the doubled value and which is not. But I want to say this is the 150 damage, this Giga Blow is the 150 SP cost. A 5 attack chain that costs me 150 SP will probably do about 3 times the damage as Giga Blow will. Easily. There is no fucking point to the spells unless there's an effect in there that you want, but in general it's not. Like, I don't want to say there's no fucking use, because like, for instance, this one, uh, the amount of hits you do is very... has a large impact on the amount of, like, freeze points you build up. So using that is actually very good, because it basically builds a bar of whatever, I don't even know if it's called, like, fireies, whatever. It basically builds a bar of that on its own by using that, so if you want to get into that form, that helps a lot. But in general, the skills and the magic are just completely underwhelming in comparison to just using regular attack chains. They're just, they're just nowhere near, they're not comparable in the usefulness there. But on top of that, the game is just easy. It is easy. The only times I have ever been in any kind of danger whatsoever were in battles that were obviously like, okay, these are side quests that you should be not partaking in until like you go through one more dungeon and then after you finish this dungeon you should be doing this when you have an extra you know like five to ten levels however much you would get from it then you would be able to do this the normal easy route and that is the only time i've ever had a challenge but there were maybe like two battles where i had to bother healing during them or otherwise i might have died and so this game is just there's no challenge to it whatsoever it's very easy um, it's very grindy as well, though. like you saw when I was just trying to get those pretty shells. It's very grindy. The worst one so far, the worst offender is, uh, if you go, am I still here? If you do these quests, as you can see at the, the top middle right there, the C quest rank. Every single time you start at E, and then he gives you a, an initial D rank quest, which, let me see. Do I, I, I don't know, actually, it, it'll be pointless to look for it, I think. I'm trying to think of what fuck it is points to look for, but there's I'll find the B rank or the C rank one because the C rank one is easy. Or maybe they don't stick. Oh, you know what? They probably don't stick around. They're probably gone. They are gone because it's not here anymore. So he gives you one quest once you do enough of the previous ranks quests to level up your quest rank. So right now my B rank one is this one. Robot Research, where I gotta get five of these ultra-powered circuits, and I guarantee you, they are going to be hard as hell to get. It's gonna take me an hour of effort solely to do, just to find those five items. The previous one was you had to make these two, you had to synthesize these two gems, which required, the first thing you had to do was get uh, five fire stones and a lightning stone, and then you combine the five fire stones into a blaze stone, you combine the blaze stone and the lightning stone, and that makes one of the stones that you need. The other one, you need five water stones, you combine that into, I want to say a blizzard stone, but I'm not 100% positive on what exactly that was called. And then you gotta get five wind stones. That is 16 different stones that you need. It took me... How long did that take? Probably an hour and a half? Way too fucking long to get that shit. Like, grindiness is just, it's not, it has its place. It does have its place, and I will freely admit that, that, you know, like, when if you want to get, you know, like, the most powerful items in the game, that should require a very concentrated effort and knowledge of what you're looking for to make that happen, because it's unnecessary. To, you know, like, you don't need the best weapon in the game, but it's just kind of, you know, it's just, it's just there. But this is literally to access more content in the game, and it requires over an hour of effort to just do this one fucking quest? Get out of here. I hate design like that. Just hate it. And so, um, just all, all that shit on top, I just, the more and more I play it, I'm getting less and less, I, I was initially fairly impressed with the story because there was very little to do with, you know, like, oh, I'm an underage looking girl and oh, this bad thing happened to me, oh, let me like bend over and show cleavage and like, what, like that kind of shit. Not my jam. I understand that some people like that. That's not my jam. But that and that was the major thing that you know people were like, this is basically the same game as Hyper Dimension Neptunia. Why are you liking this? 
Yeah, except it's got characters that don't look 12 years old with the bodies of porn stars. So, had that going for it. But, just, you know, the more I play it, the less... It still has a decent overarching story, like if you just... If you looked at the entire story by itself and you didn't uh, really mind like the minute-to-minute -minute interactions, the story's a good story, and I, I, I'm, I am enjoying that, and that's why I'm still playing. But, like, the more the more I play, the more I am disliking the minute-to-minute -minute interactions and stuff like that. They're getting, they're getting very stale. They continually use the same gags over and over. So it, it was definitely a snap judgment to say that this was a this was a surprisingly good game. It's not anymore. It was for the first couple of hours, but now that you know, the more I play it, the less of a challenge there is, and all that shit. It was a bad judgment on my part. But anyway, I shall stop uh, talking. I've rambled on for long enough. Persona 4 Arena's in five days, y'all! I've actually heard that some people aren't receiving it very well. Hasn't been received very well. Some people are already given up on it and imported it. It's been out for a month. I hope that's untrue. Because I want to play this game and I want to love this game and I want to use my doggy, man! Let me actually talk about that for a second. One thing I can't fucking believe is there's so many. I've seen so many people talking. Now, granted, these are on message boards that are not known for their high quality players. And so a lot of the times, you know, when you gather a lot of kind of mid-tier players together, which like I'm not I'm not trying to like smash on mid-tier players, but to be perfectly honest, when the mid-tier players try to talk about gameplay aspects and like what makes a character effective, what makes a character not effective, you get very mixed results. And so a lot of I've seen at least like at least 10 different people talk about how Ken's mix-up is just just can't be very good because he has no jump cancelable normals. Huh? Huh? You have Koromaru. That's what Koromaru is. He's a set of normals all on his own that you can use while doing whatever the fuck you want to do with Ken. It's ba there is no difference to having a regular character do like 5A 5B, 2B, and then that 2B is jump cancelable, and then you can, you know, jump and do an aerial attack to continue your pressure, versus doing 5A, 5B with Ken, do a Koromaru normal, and Koromaru puts them into block stun, and then you jump with Ken. There is no difference there. <laughs> Except that they're still stuck in block stun while you're beginning your jump. You still have that going for you. So that was already, I'm just kind of like, God, I can't trust anybody. I, I can't trust anybody. I can't. Uh, that's that's kind of like my general reaction to most of the arguments that occur on various forums. And this includes Dust Loop too. Like, you will get people that are so elitist in regard to, like, character, like discussion of gameplay. Like, oh, if, you're, if it's not on Dust Loop, then it doesn't matter. Shit like that. Now, fuck that. There are some idiots on Dust Loop. Just absolute morons. Like, never, but I have seen things that just blow my fucking mind with how ignorant and stupid the discussion is, and it kills. I'm just like, oh, just stop. You're so wrong. <laughs> and it hurts. It really does. So, like, that's why. I, that is actually one big reason why I actually avoid a lot of gameplay discussion of a game that hasn't come out yet. Because some people will just treat unverified rumors as complete and utter truth. You know, like, there's a, there's a segment of people that have been like, Margaret is going to be the most broken character in the world because her 5A is super good. For so, I don't know, I don't even know what her 5A is, but that is actually, like, that's basically an argument I have seen. Is that, like, her 5A is broken, thus Margaret is broken. That kind of, and you just see stuff like that and it's like, why am I even, why, why am I here? Why am I here? There's no, there's nothing that can happen here except making me dumber than I already am. And I can't have that. I can't have that. I am already just not, just, I'm not a genius in the first place. I can't be having people dragging me down even further. I gotta retain what smarts I got, man! And so that's actually, that is really a large reason why I do avoid a lot of, like, fighting game discussion before the game comes out. Because everybody's wrong. Everybody's wrong, and it never stops, and they don't understand why they're wrong. They just keep talking about it. <laughs> Stop hurting the
the world with your stupid. Please. And so we're gonna end on that note.